Well, welcome to the Westergren backyard. As you can tell, we're never too far away from church. Um, my guess is you're probably spending a lot of time at your home too, and hopefully getting outside a little bit. Um, I'm kind of wondering, what is it that you're looking for today? Uh, maybe it's some extra toilet paper, maybe it's some paper towels, uh, maybe it's hand soap. For us, I know we're gonna be having some pork today, and so we're looking for some rolls, and we'll be doing that a little later. These are really strange days, I know. I was talking to one of the oldest members of our church, Lillian Stein, and she's in quarantine at her home, and it's interesting. She's saying, I just don't ever remember a time like this. And 100 years almost, 99 years. Um, and we really don't know how to feel or how to react. Um, some things seem very normal, and then some things very, very different, like not being able to go to church. Well, how should we as followers of Jesus Christ react as our world is busy going through this uh, pandemic? You know, I guess a few things that I just wanna share on the mortality rate of the COVID-19 is 2%. The flu is really 1%. So um, the, the fact is that 30 to 50,000 Americans die every year of the flu. Um, but if experts are correct, um, thousands are gonna die this year, tens of thousands of COVID-19 and hundreds of thousands around the world. This really is serious. And I appreciate all of us as we're doing our part to kind of do the social distancing, stay at home, honor the authorities. Um, that's one of the ways we follow Jesus. And yet through this all, what we have is a peace. Um, we don't have to panic um, for some reasons like uh, we know a lot. We know that people are working on a vaccine. We know kind of how to keep the transmission away. Just like the flu, we know that the overwhelming amount of people who um, uh, get it will um, recover from it. But the most important thing is to remember that God is in control. Um, His promises are true every day. Matthew 28, he ends these last words before he goes into heaven. I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. In Romans chapter eight, he says, even in the midst of challenging times, that he'll make all things work together for good for those um, who love him. So again, back to that question, how should we react as followers of Jesus? Well, first of all, be concerned, do what we can, be wise, be cautious, uh, make the most of your time with your family and with your Lord during this time. And I really encourage you to reach out and help people, to call someone that you just know you need to call that he's put on your heart to care for them, um, but not to worry. One of the things in my backyard is we constantly have grackles coming around. It's interesting, we live in Austin. We actually have a love-hate with these birds. But Jesus, I don't know if he was looking at grackles, but he was definitely looking at the birds, says, therefore I tell you, don't worry about what you eat or drink or about your body or about what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Just look at the birds, those grackles in the air. They don't sow or reap or store in barns and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? So I think as a follower of Jesus, what I would simply say is, we don't have to worry. God's got this, and he's got you. He cared enough to send Jesus for you, and he will be with us throughout this life and throughout all eternity. Look forward to seeing you online on Sunday.